Hey guys, Becky here, 52 Baker. Welcome back. This week we'll be working on a beautiful bearded Irish sugar flower. And because we don't really like using wires, I'll be attempting to make this without any wires. So let me know what you guys think about that, but let's get started. Okay, so I know I said no wires, but I promise these are the only wires that we'll need because these flowers need to go on something. So using 26 gauge wires, I'm going to grab three of them and I'm going to add a little hook at the end. These wires are fairly long because they will also be the stem of my flower. Next, I'll move my wires to the side and I'll pull out my veining board, grab some light purple flower paste. Yours can be any color you want. This part of the flower will be the very center of the flower, the part that most people don't see, but we're going to use to help support our flower and because we like all the details. Using this little template that you can download, and I'll leave the link in the description, I'm going to cut out three of these. I wanna make sure my template aligns with the vein on the veining board so that I have somewhere to put my wire through. Once I cut that out, I'm going to insert hook end first into about a third of this little flower, or this little petal, I should say. I'm going to give it a good dusting and then with a rolling ball tool or my fingers, however you prefer, I'm going to thin out the edges just to pull them out a bit. Once I'm happy with that, then I'm going to line my flower edge up with the edge of the board and using a toothpick, I'm going to roll my toothpick back and forth to make little frills all across the edge of this flower. I roll the toothpick, lift it up, leave a space, and then roll it on the next space over so you have a rolled edge, an unrolled edge, and so on and so on. If I want it really frilly, then those edges I did not roll, I will flip my flower over and roll them on the other side. That's going to create a really big frill and really pretty. Once I'm happy with it, then what I'm going to do is give it a bit of a curve It'll look like it's falling over and then coming back up again, and I'll set it off to dry that way. I'm going to make all three of mine in the exact same way. Next, before we move on to our other petals, I'm going to make myself a little mold. This is a half inch styrofoam ball that I cut in half, and I just poke a toothpick through the end so it looks like a lollipop. Save that for later. Now I'll be working on the petals of the bearded iris that are standing up toward the sky. I have a little template for this and it's available for download on my website. I'll leave a link in the description box below. For this, even though we're not going to wire these flower petals, I'm going to go ahead and leave a thicker center when I roll out my flower paste so that the flower paste has more strength and structure because it's not going to have the wire to give it that strength and structure. I go ahead and place my template right on top, making sure that that thicker little mound of flower paste is in the center. And then however thin you'd like your flower petal to be on the edges, make it that thin. Know that the thinner the edges of the petal, the less frill that you're going to get from your flower paste later on. If you want it to be really frilly and really out there, then leave it a little bit thicker so you have more flower paste to work with and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. Also, in case you're wondering why I didn't just use a veining board, the reason is that when you use a veining board, the thicker center is a bit more prominent and I wanted this one to blend in and be a bit more seamless, so I prefer to do it by hand and just leave a bit thicker of a center with my rolling pin. Next, I'm going to just thin out the blunt edges of the outer part of my petal. And then I'm ready to vein it. I'm not using a bearded iris veiner. I don't have one. What I'm using is a generic rose veiner. Again, all my tools will be linked in the description box below in case you'd like to see what I'm working with. 
pop it right out of the vein there. And then just like earlier, I'm going to line up the edge of my petal with the edge of my foam board. And using a toothpick, I'll pick a spot, roll my toothpick back and forth, pick another spot, and again and again until I have all the frills exactly how I like it. If I want it to be super frilly, then I'll go ahead and flip my petal over and frill the edges on the other side that I didn't frill earlier. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you want your petal to be super frilly, do leave your edges a little bit thicker so you have more flower paste to work with. If not, this is about as frilly as they'll get if you leave them thin like mine. Once you're happy with your frills, go ahead and place it on that mold we made earlier and make sure to wrap the base of your petal around the toothpick. You want it to stay round so we keep that nice round shape when we're gluing the petals on later. This is going to make the process so much easier for gluing it. It all will fit in like a puzzle piece. Go ahead and repeat this another two times for a total of three inner petals. Now for the outer petals, I'm making three and it is the exact same process that we just did for the large standing up inner petals. The only difference is I'm using a different color flower paste. This is totally optional. And the way I'm putting it to dry is on an egg silicone mold so that it dries opening out sort of kind of hanging over, but I'm still using that toothpick to make sure that the base of my petal is nice and rounded when it dries up and everything can fit in nicely like a puzzle. Now this part is entirely up to you, but I think adding color dust to your flowers helps it to look super realistic and also helps you to create shadows and highlights that make it look more beautiful as well. So for my center, I'm just using some dark purple color dust to get the edges so that they stand out a bit more. For my larger inner petals, I'm going to just use a bit of that dark purple again on the edges and in the little frills to create more of a shadow. For my darker outer petals, I'm going to mix a bit of a strong red in with the purple just so that the color is a bit more pronounced. The red really works well with this dark purple flower paste. There's not a lot that you'll be able to see, I think especially on camera, but in person you'll notice the difference. Again, I'm just dusting mostly on the frills. And once I'm happy with the color, I'm going to go ahead and stick these inner little petals all together. So uh, I wrap some floral tape at the base of one of them, and then I put all three of them together so that they are bending outward. You'll see here how it should look. And now I'm ready to move on so that I can begin to add the inner petals. Before I do this, my wire is a bit thin, so I'm going to add some more floral paste around it, just at the base of where the petals, the very inner petals are. So I'm gonna add some glue to the base of them and some glue to the wire and just add a chunk of flower paste around it just so that the other petals that I'm gluing on here have something thicker to hold on to. I try to taper that down the floral wire so that it's not a complete edge, so that it's more of a seamless transition. And now I'm ready to add some of my petals. On the rounded edges, that's where I'll add my edible glue. And you do need a bit of patience with this because they will not dry immediately. But go ahead and place the first petal in between two of the inner petals. Give it a squeeze and then add the others in the same way. You'll have almost like alternating triangles if you look at how the petals are shaped. With your fingers, give them a good squeeze. 
your flower petals will probably be overlapping over each other but they should fit nicely if they were beginning to dry in that circular shape that we were creating with the toothpicks and once you're comfortable go ahead and set it off to dry for a few minutes upside down once it's dried a bit go ahead and grab your outer petals assuming they're mostly dry and add some edible glue to the rounded base of it and again between two of the inner petals go ahead and place one of the outer petals and so on and so on again it'll be like alternating triangles throughout the entire flower once they're on there, go ahead and give them a good squeeze, hang them to dry upside down. Now this part here, this is going to be the little bearded part of our iris, that little fuzzy bit on the outer petals that lies on the center of it. I'm going to just roll out a little bit of flower paste in a long shape tapered on both ends and using some embroidery scissors I'm going to snip like frilly little hairs on this. Now if you're smart you would do this while the outer petals are drying and just glue it on there but for whatever reason it was easier for me to make the petal and then add these after maybe i'll do it different in the future but you go ahead and do that three separate times one for each outer petal now once they're ready don't wait for them to dry you want them to still be soft and pliable you go ahead and place it on the center of one of your outer petals and then give it a little push down so that it stays on nice and firm Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. And the flower paste color that I'm using is the light purple, but you can just go with yellow or any other flower paste you like. I'm going to be adding some bits of pollen in yellow, so I didn't feel the need to make my flower paste any specific color because it was just going to be covered up anyway. Now once I think that that little bearded part is dry enough that it won't move around on me, I'm going to add some edible glue all around it. And lucky for me, my flower paste is flexible so I could just move my petals out of the way. And using my edible pollen, which is a combination of yellow color dust and cornmeal, I'm going to drop it right onto the glued part and then adjust as I need wipe off any excess, add more if I need it. And I do this for all three of the bearded parts. Now if you like, you can stop here and your flower will be all done, but I don't like unfinished edges, so I'm going to go one step further and add the greenery around the base of my iris. For this, I'll be adding some edible glue to the base of my petals as well as to my wire, and I'll add some green flower paste all around it, making sure to blend it in with the petals with my fingers, and then just tapering it down the edge of the stem. This doesn't have to be super neat because we're going to cover it up right now anyway but I like to sort of blend it in so that it looks a bit more natural. Now you might notice that I also add edible glue on the outside of this green flower paste, and that's for two reasons. One, it's going to melt it a bit, all the liquid, and so it makes it easier to blend in the seams with my petals and taper it off. And two, because it has tylose in this edible glue, it'll also strengthen it a bit. With a Dresden tool, I'm just going to add a few edges for some texture. Again, not super necessary because we're going to cover most of it up, but I do like the little details.
Next, I'm going to roll some green flour paste, and this can be as thin as you're comfortable with. I like to make mine very thin. Then using my rotary cutting tool, I'm just going to cut two shapes that vaguely resemble leaves. It doesn't have to be exact. They don't have to be the same size. It just has to be sort of a leaf shape. Now if you have a veiner that goes up and down, that will work perfect for this. If not, you can just place these leaves on your flower as is, or you can use a Dresden tool to give it some texture and veins. For myself, because my edges are a little bit blunt, I am going to use a rolling ball tool to smooth the edges a bit. And one of my flowers is getting a little banged up, but it's okay because these green bits on the flower that we're making are usually a little more banged up looking anyway. Because I happen to have a veiner that goes up and down, I'm going to go ahead and use it. But again, you can just use a Dresden tool and score your leaf up and down. Once I'm happy with them, I'll add some glue on the lower half of the edges of each leaf and I'm going to wrap them around the base of my flower. So I'll start with the smaller one a bit higher up and I'll make sure it's nicely on there and then the larger one on the opposite end, I'll wrap it around as well, a little bit lower than the first one. Then using my fingers, I'll just adjust it however I see fit. If you like, you can add color dust. Because it's green, you could also just leave it like that. I think this part's really going to depend on whether or not this part of the flower is showing on your cake or not. And that's it, you have a beautiful bearded iris flower. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. As always, if you liked it, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I would super appreciate that. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. If not, I will see you guys for the next tutorial.